And we are ready for our second match. There is the father and son duo, Joe O'Connor and Steve O'Connor. But they're going to have to sit and watch right now as it is Ben Doyle with the opening break for the Irish pairing. And what an opening break it is. Jesus, what about this for a break? Power and control. Balls flying in everywhere. Oh, makes four balls and leaves. Oh, a nice open table. And you may look at this finish and think unmissable, but they just have to be a little bit careful with the two yellows that are down this end of the table, one either side of the line. And that line on the table is for the referee basically to know that he gets the pack dead straight, he uses that as a guide, if you wonder what that's for, but there's two yellows either side of that. And they just have to make sure that they get the correct angle on one of them. And that correct angle is Let's just play a little stun shot so the cue ball moves away from the other one. So, key shot coming up. Not played the best of shots there. I don't think they've quite got the angle they want. Maybe they have. They're looking down the table. Must have a touch more on it than I first thought. I think you're right. I think you may have to force it a little bit. He is definitely straighter than the cue ball on the line would have been perfect, just to give you an idea of how straight he is. And as I said, these two balls become a little bit tricky if you don't get low on one of them, and he isn't low. So I think he has to play some sort of cannon now. And of course, when you play any sort of cannon, it can go wrong. And it has gone wrong. I don't think he has any other shot other than cue ball off this top cushion, kick into the back of it, and try and pot it in the top corner. I don't see how else he gets it moving quick enough and tracking towards a pocket. And he decided just to play safe. So we're into a tactical exchange, but you feel the Reds have the advantage and the O'Connors have the advantage here. So we spoke about they're able to talk, not only in the doubles, but also in the singles. So Joe can advise him at any point, and this is where it will be invaluable for Joe to say, this is what we're doing, this is what we're playing. And, and sorry, Sian, I was just gonna say that I do think it's also important, the management of who plays which shot so, for example, I think he's going to try and cannon this. Well, I thought he was going to try and cannon it out, but I don't know if the plan was to cover the pocket there. If it was, I like the plan because it doesn't double into the middle. And if he covers the pocket, it doesn't double into there. So, really, the only shot he has is a back treble back into this bottom left corner. Very nearly made a, a combination. I know that sounds strange, but if the, the ball drops in originally, then the yellow is tracking. And yeah, just going back to my point there of who plays what shot. Oh. Steve's had his Weetabix this morning. You get to rip that back about two foot too far. You get the sense there's some edgy moments out there early in this group for Steve. Yeah, still going to get the frame on the board. No problems at all when you've got a cueist as good as Joe as a partner. Just anywhere in the bottom half of the table will do. It is great to see the O'Connors in action, father and son duo. Of course, Joe making great strides in the snooker world at the moment. And he's getting to play here in the pool world with his dad. 
pretty amazing. Yeah, as they're currently ranked number 31, he has been to a ranking final and he has beat all of the big names in the snooker world. John Higgins, the lot, and he's ranked number 31. It's going but, one way, isn't it? Yeah, you can bet everything you have that he's going to go higher than that. He works hard, does everything right, keeps himself fit. So a video that he does martial arts as a hobby. Seems to do all the right things off the table, and when you do that, the right things happen on the table. I'm sure he's going to be... He's a really nice lad off the table, but I think his temperament on the table is as good as I've seen. He, he see, never seems to be flustered, ever. Into the singles action then. Dry break from Joe. Means it's Ben Doyle at the table. This is slightly awkward in his bottom corner and the top half of the table. Yeah, I have to be honest, I haven't seen Ben play before. That's the first time I get to have a look at him. Um, oh, um, is that a foul? I think that was a foul. Yeah, have a look, look at this. this. I don't think the yellow can go where it goes to if that's not a foul. Well, maybe one that's been missed, but... I think you can always tell when you're looking at close fouls like that, when you have two balls close together, I think it tells the, its own story of where the other ball goes to. And I think that that yellow can't hen, end up that far up that cushion at that pace unless he catches it first. But it's gone. And these reds are now very, very tricky. <laughs> Pot it in the middle, he's got half a chance. We're not sure he can get to it. Yeah, but if he can pot it in the middle, the cue ball is going close to in off in the other middle. And okay, he can manipulate the white, but yeah, he's choosing to pull back. Don't disagree with this shot. It was always going to be a challenging chance there for Ben Doyle. Trusted the table there and looked like it stayed absolutely bang straight. But I think he was probably open for a slight double kiss. The yellow wasn't touching the rail, of course, so if it double kisses, squirts the cue ball along the back cushion and keeps him off this one. See, Joe just slightly grimaced. Ben didn't want to take it on, but he has left an easy yellow for Joe to start. Yeah, and I think he may, in fairness to him, have had a slightly bad contact there. A fraction of a kick. Let's just stop that cue ball from rolling another rotation and would have been on or close to the back rail, which wouldn't have left this clip. goes in so now it's time to work on the, the eight ball and the yellow to its right and possibly even the one to its left it might just go it's obviously got other pockets in the bottom right corner certainly a problem to solve yeah it may have fell with an angle where he can top into the eight ball or even through the gap and move the red they did both not sure it's come out particularly well for him though does the yellow that's next to the eight ball Pass into the top left corner. I'm not sure. I don't think the one next to the red goes either. 
Could be time to pull back. Yeah, if he cuts this up the cushion and welds the cue ball. Yeah, say so weld it to that yellow, but anywhere behind it. The objective was to keep him off the two reds at the top end of the table. And clever shot because what he's making Ben do is he's making Ben develop his problem for him. Trying to tie those two yellows up. I'm sure he was trying to get them to reach each other. He may have just left this bottom one. Yeah, he was. He was trying to get those two yellows together, so nothing goes anywhere, and there's no plant, but he's under it. it. So I does have to hit a rail after contact, either cue ball or object ball has to hit a rail after contact. So for example, if that cue ball had to hit the cushion first, then it's the yellow, and then doesn't hit the cushion, it would be a foul. That was another close one. I think it was just okay, that one, but it was close. It's given half a chance here to Ben. That's a pot. Pot. fantastic pot. Not only is it a fantastic pot, but it's a fantastic cue ball. Keeps his head dead still on this one, which is what you have to do, especially when you're queuing off the rail like that. But just look at where he got, he's got the cue ball. He's left a lovely angle on this one at the bottom of the table. Important not to hit this too hard because he doesn't want the cue ball to catch the yellow on the way back. And because he didn't want the cue ball to catch the yellow, he's overcut it. You see, he was worried about the cue ball just flicking the yellow on the way back. And had it flicked the yellow, it probably would have gone behind the eight ball when he was conscious of that. Covers the bottom right-hand corner, but Joe doesn't necessarily need that pocket. So a chance to go 2-0 ahead. Yeah, doesn't have to touch anything, doesn't have to play a cannon. The yellow next to the eight ball easily pots into the right centre. So as long as he gets a good cue ball on it, he will leave it as his last ball. Might have to move something here, he's a touch thin on this. I think he can just screw behind it. Oh no, you were right, he did. And it's gone, well, wrong-ish. I thought he could have just gripped behind it, but no, you were right from the overhead look. He had quite a lot of angle, so no, he couldn't avoid it. Well, this frame feels very pivotal. We're tracking towards the final five minutes and 15 seconds a shot. 2 0 will be a huge advantage. 1 1 all to play for. If Joe wants to attack, he can pot this bring the cue ball up into the middle of the table and leave the cannon off the penultimate yellow. Well, the only way you can get the cannon now is a direct screw back into it. The dreaded double kiss. It's going to be forced into something big here. Tough pot up the cushion or the centre, you'd feel. I think he will back himself to pot this long into the top right corner. Guaranteed to have a shot at the eight ball. But the pot's tough. Oh, that's clever. Oh, wow, what a clever shot. That is very clever. Brilliant stuff from Joe O'Connor, the loss of turn to retain control of this frame. Yeah, and it's such a clever shot because not only has he snook at him, he's put the yellow in the middle of the table. And when the yellow is in the middle of the table, it basically means it can be potted from anywhere. Oh, 
It's a good hit from Ben. A chance once again for Joe O'Connor to make it 2-0. And we are in the final five minutes. And it will be 15 seconds a shot after this one. Because we've had a couple of slowish frames, certainly this one has been. It means that it's going to be 2 0 with just over four minutes left on the clock. And it is 2 0. Ben will be kicking himself. A couple of chances to win that one. Yeah, and your mindset in this position is you're 2 0 ahead. It's four minutes, 26 seconds on the clock. You would have to be seriously unlucky to lose the match from this position. Your opponents would have to rattle off three frames in quick succession without you getting some sort of chance. So the chances of them losing from here is very slim, but it can happen. It's 15 seconds a shot. There's golden breaks, there's golden ducks. Anything can happen. Probably thinking, though, from the, the Connor side, if they just get one decent visit at the table, they can do a lot of damage on this match clock. They feel for Sean Sharkey, who's going to have the break here in frame three. Needs a break clearance. Massive break. Yeah, fantastic break, and once again, hasn't been rewarded. These are not nice. I feel like we've seen that a lot tonight, where the, the brakes looked big, but come out just enough of a problem that actually messy and awkward to deal with. Ooh. Just the yellow doesn't pass top left. I don't think it does. That is his breaker ball for the other problem, yellow, but I don't think it passes, so... Yeah, not nice. The two yellows in this half of the table, either side of the line again. I'm not perfect. Okay, he's played a loss of turn, but he's left Steve a big pocket down the line if he wants it as first shot. As long as he makes it past the jaws of the middle pocket, pretty unmissable. The red, the inside one of the two on the rail. That passes. As, we said, as long as he makes it past the, the bump of the middle pocket, and he hasn't managed to do so. That was definitely a gamble from Sean Sharkey, but probably one he felt he had to take, because if you slow that one down and end up in a tactical exchange, you end up losing the match anyway on the clock. So. Yeah, and Sean is perhaps walking around the table here like it's nil-nil, but he really needs to hurry up. If they have any chance of getting anything from this match, he needs to be quick. That's not good. Wants to be on the one at the top of the table. I'm not sure he is. Nice recovery. Can he just get to the right hand side of the cue ball? He wants to play it to the right hand side to come back down the right hand side of the table. No, he can't. Bridging and needs right hand side. Fantastic shot, Sean. That is a brilliant shot. Sean Sharkey gets his partnership on the board then. Two frames to one. 152 left on the clock. It will be the O'Connors with the break in our second scotch frame in this match. And you feel if they make a ball, they can run that clock down. That will be the key here. They said they're here to have fun and enjoy it. That's exactly what they look like they're doing. Always very entertaining watching Sean play, whether it's in the Challenger Series or playing for Ireland. I've seen some very entertaining moments from him and of course 
Ben was playing with him in Morocco, part of the Irish team. Any ball will do here for Joe. And that will do. I actually think these all go on. Doesn't really have an opening yellow, but I don't think that matters. I think all the reds go. They do. Both of these reds on the right side cushion past this yellow. So they've instantly used their extension. Ooh. The miss from Steve means we've got one minute, 16 seconds left. And these reds still all go. Wow, that's a bad miss because now they turn the table over, even though there was a red potted. If you don't pot the first one, it's an open table. And it's not a good shot from Ben. I think he's just okay. He can just turn it over. Wow, what a shot again from Sean. He spun it in. He played it with loads of the left hand side. Brilliant shot from Sean. He actually played it with loads of left hand side and played the red off the red and spun it back off the top rail back towards the work with left hand side. Fantastic finish. Yeah, just gave themselves a little bit of a headache there. That brilliant shot from Sean Sharkey. And we're all square. 23 seconds left. It will be the Irish duo with the break. I believe it will be Sean Sharkey with the break here. I think it's, it's an individual frame. He says it doesn't matter who breaks. I think it's Sean's break and uh, Sean's frame, and therefore Sean's break. Of course, the golden break in play. 23 seconds is not long enough unless it's a, a miracle break clearance. Yeah, and I think what happened there was Steve with that red was, I think they got it in their mind that he just needed to waste some time and play the shots on the beeps almost. So he got down to play it on seven or eight seconds he hadn't heard the beep so he got back up and then when he got back up the beep started so then he had to rush back down and it all seemed very rushed and of course when you're inexperienced under it when you hear the beep you instantly think i have to hit the cue ball but actually hey, ball. <laughs> oh, i thought that was in oh, i thought that was in as well oh he couldn't could he This is incredible. Fantastic effort. He needs it to stop. Oh, wow, what an effort from Sean Sharkey. He would have been on the eight ball with that fluke, but he's a few seconds out of time. How close was this to stealing away the victory for Sean Sharkey and Ben Doyle? Another amazing match full of drama, but it ends the same way. 2-2. All to play for here in the Pairs Cup.